Hi babes, I just did these medium knotless braids on myself and I'm going to show you guys what I used and how I did them. So the materials that you're going to need are Outre's Twisted Up 4X DIY Pre-Stretch Braiding Hair and I got the color 2T1B slash Violet. This braiding hair is great for knotless braids and comes in 40, 50, and 60 inches. It's also very lightweight but still full when it comes to volume. A rat tail precision comb that has a rat tail edge and Shine and Jam, and I use the yellow one. So step one is gonna to be to part down the middle from the front to the back. And a tip that I use is to line up my comb in the middle of my nose to make sure that my part is in the middle. And I am going ahead and using the rat tail end of my comb as well as my tri mirror to make sure my part is straight. At first, it could be a little intimidating trying to maneuver your comb with your hands because you are essentially doing it in the mirror backwards. But with practice and time, it definitely becomes a lot easier. So next, you're going to use your Shine and Jam and place it directly on your part. And then you're going to repart it with the precision edge of your comb just to make sure your part is as crisp as possible. So now we're going to do the same thing but horizontally from ear to ear and you're going to make a T part essentially from ear to ear and directly down the middle of your head. The row below the top of my ear is going to be my first row and I'm going to base the size of every row above it off of that one. So for this sizing I did medium and I did six rows in total. Make sure you're using a brick layering pattern which means that the boxes are staggered on top of each other to make it full but not heavy. So let's talk about how much hair you should be pulling out of your bundle. I like to keep my pieces small so that I have a lot of room to work with the size of my braid. And if I wanna build up on that size, I'll add more pieces. Or if I want my braids to be smaller, I'll add less pieces. So I'm gonna start off by showing you guys how I do my overhand method of installing a knotless braid. And I find this one to be a little bit easier once you get the proper hand positioning down to do it because it allows you to have more grip. So you're gonna first start off by splitting your piece into three sections. You're gonna grab that right piece with your right hand and the middle and left piece with your left hand. Now I am right-handed. If you're left-handed, it might be opposite for you. Just do whatever feels most comfortable. So I'm gonna scoop my hands closest to the base of my head and begin braiding. So using your index finger and your thumb, you're gonna go underneath the middle piece Grab the left side and do the same thing to the other side. Go underneath that middle piece with your index finger and thumb and grab the right side. This video is not mirrored by the way, it's not flipped backwards. So you can literally watch this video, place your hands behind your head and copy the same movements that my hands are doing. So now we're gonna add in our braiding hair. So you're gonna hold the braiding hair in between your fingers and place it in between your index finger and thumb that's already holding your actual hair. You wanna make sure that the strands of your real hair are lining up with the strands of the braiding hair. And again, use your index finger and thumb to go underneath the middle and grab the other side. I prefer to do the overhand method for braids in the back of my head that I can't necessarily reach by turning my head. So this method is easier for me. But you want to make sure that you're also keeping your fingers and your hands close to the base of your head so that you're not pulling on the braid and it's not falling apart as you're trying to braid it. But the process is the same. You're gonna continue adding pieces to the right side until the braid is the size that you want. For me, I did add about eight or nine pieces in total, but as these braids are super long past my butt, I did add more strands toward the bottom of the braid to make it longer. But toward the top, I added about five pieces. But honestly, I don't really count how many pieces I'm adding as sometimes the hair in the back of my head is thicker than the hair in my front. So I just add pieces until my braid starts to become the size of the ones around it. So throughout braiding, you're gonna see me touch the base of my braid. And this is just to make sure that it's not twisting as I'm braiding down. And after I get about an inch or two down the braid, I switch my hand positioning find the three strands that I was braiding again, 
and just continue to braid down. This is just to be more comfortable and if you've ever tried to braid your own hair, you'd understand what I mean. You can't really continue using the overhand method with your hands in that position just because as the braid starts to get longer, you have to change your hand positioning. This is where I added in those extra pieces to make my braid super long. So I usually add one right about where my real hair ends and the braid starts to get a little smaller. I'll add another piece to maintain that thickness down to the point where I want it to be. Once I've decided that my braid is as long as I want it to be, I'll stop adding pieces and just continue to braid all the way down to the end. So now we're gonna move on to how to start a knotless braid using the underhand method. This method is very similar to the overhand method. The only difference is that I'm using my middle fingers to lead and go underneath that middle piece. My hands are also angled inward as I'm braiding with more of the underside of my hand, therefore underhand braiding. So we're going back to step one, split the piece into three sections. And this time you can see my hands are facing the braid and angled inward. So this time, instead of using my index finger, I'm using my middle finger to go ahead, go underneath that piece and add in the hair. With this method, I add the piece of hair in between my middle finger and my index finger and continue to braid. I prefer to use this method when I'm on the sides of my head and the front of my head. And this is just because I'm able to actually use my hands to reach. As you can see, my head's like kind of turned a little bit. And if I try to use this one in the back of my head, it's just a little difficult and I literally have to twist my neck like an owl. So this one's really helpful to use on the sides, the front and the top of your head. Making sure that you're keeping your hands as close to the base of the braid as possible is gonna make sure that it's tight and it doesn't flip. Sometimes you'll see me pull on individual strands to kind of angle the braid more in the middle of the box and to make sure that everything is tight and the way I want it to be. Again, I do switch my hand positioning to make it more comfortable for me as I'm braiding down the braid. So now it's time to boil our hot water to seal the ends. So I use this kettle by Fairwear, but you can use any 
kettle you can boil your water on the stove in a pot doesn't matter but you just need to boil it and make sure that it is boiling hot so make sure you have a towel handy as well as a pitcher that has a handle on it or you could use a container a cup but i do recommend something that has a handle so that you do not drop that hot water on yourself while dipping, I'm going in an up and down motion to let the water straighten out the ends. You don't want your ends to be all crinkly and crunchy looking. After dipping, I go ahead and use my scissors to snip off any tangles or any pieces that just don't match the rest of the braids. And finally, the last step is to add that mousse. The mousse that I use is Vigoral's Olive Oil Mousse, and it's about a few dollars at your local beauty supply store. And this mousse is just gonna set any flyaways that I have in place. In total, this style did take about eight hours, but I broke it up into two four-hour sessions with a big sleep in between. So this is what my parting's looking like. I did six rows with 45 to 50 braids in total. And this is the final look. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if this really helped you out, please let me know down in the comments or if you have any questions or comments, let me know guys. I really hope this helped you out if you're trying to do your hair for the first time, for the second time, anytime. And do not forget to hit the subscribe button to see more videos and content like this. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching.